Hello, dear viewers. Welcome back to Let's Play Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. Uh, we are going to go to Grumbletooth. This is a deep dwarf fighter that I made. Uh, sort of uh, after the... Uh, not too long after the death of Crestor, which uh, was our last deep dwarf. And uh, I... I I think the mistake I made with him was worshipping Okawaru instead of uh, Makleb or Trog or some, some other god that, that gives you a source of healing. I, I, I think that that's pretty important. So I went with Makleb this time. Uh, I played through several of the dungeon levels just to make sure that I got a good start, uh, since uh, you've already seen the early levels with the Deep Dwarf, uh, and if you haven't, you can check out the, uh, the, the Tragic Tale of Crestor. But here we have our guy. We started off with a long sword that got corroded by a jelly, sadly, but we found this plus two plus zero falchion of holy wrath. So it does the same damage as this long sword, but it is more accurate and it has the holy wrath brand, which is good against demons and uh, undead. Unholy beings. We have some rings. Sustenance, protection, or what we have on right now, just for the fun of it. Uh, we also have poison resistance, although poison resistance isn't terribly important to us, particularly because we have this cool artifact. The plus two ringmail of Stacy. I just call it Stacy's ringmail. Uh, has got it going on. And that gives us resist poison and see invisible, which are sort of the two early game hurdles to overcome. Uh, resist poison is necessary to get one of the... well, to to get through the snake pits, or the spider's nest, or the swamp. You don't really need it for the shoals. For that, you really need uh, some sort of source of clarity. I highly, highly recommend it. And if you don't have clarity, you absolutely need a source of flight. Or be a merfolk and able to swim. Uh, I, I went ahead and started recording here because we found a sewer. It's one of the uh, one of the two very early side branches. Uh, the other being the ossuary, and the sewer has various critters in it: um, newts, geckos. Ah, sometimes Pergy. Pergy is an unusually thin troll. I think we're probably strong enough to take on Perky. I'm not too worried, especially if we step here, and therefore uh, he's standing in the water, so his melee attacks will suffer. Whereas we are standing on land, so ours will not. We have a few abilities from Machleb. We have Minor Destruction, Lesser Servant, and Major Destruction. I generally am going to not be using those if I have the choice, because they do cost hit points which are a premium for a Deep Dwarf. Uh, fortunately, Machleb heals you occasionally when you kill things, so that's nice. And we can always spend mana points to recharge our wand, but let's take a couple of swipes at Pergy and see how we do against him. Yeah, he doesn't seem to be really all that capable of overcoming our damage shaving. And our armor class is reasonable. Twelfth is not bad for this point. Being a troll, he regenerates very swiftly, so you have to take him out in one go. Yeah, we actually, I think, gained health in net from that. Because Machleb healed us up a little bit. So, hmm. We found potions of curing, and I think potions of heal wounds. Uh, these black potions may be poison or some such. Uh, sewers generally are not overloaded with treasure. <laughs> You'll usually find a, a half a dozen assorted potions and scrolls, and that's about it. Okay, so we don't have... Uh, we do have a source of flight, rather, but... Oh, I wonder... That actually looks interesting. Um, oh, I thought I had a potion of flight. I suppose I do not. 
We can identify these potions that we picked up, though. Oh, heal wounds. I guess we hadn't found those yet. Nice. And flight. Oh, cool. So, I guess we can just identify that. Okay. So, I guess... Because this area over here looks like... Ah, gee. I can't tell if that's... I think that's... Yeah. I think there's something over here. So, I'm going to drink this potion of flight and take a look. This is maybe kind of dangerous. Oh, no. Actually, it was quite profitable. Neat. Are there any other areas like that? Doesn't look like it. Well, that's, that's an instance where our passive magic mapping really benefited us greatly. I would not have noticed this area down here were it not for that. Okay, back to the dungeon. We're on dungeon level 6. We're very strong for dungeon level 6. We found the temple fairly early, I believe. Uh, yeah, on dungeon level 4. And I don't remember if Machlib was in the temple or not, but I think he was. Anyway, we found him a while ago, so we already have a decent amount of piety with Machlib. And we have some good equipment. This ring mail is really great. I'm, I'm really excited about this ring mail, for, for now at least. And we have a good assortment of rings. I'm keeping this ring of protection on for now, just because we don't really care about this ring of flight. I suppose I could have used this ring of flight instead of one of the potions, but I might as well drink the potions. They're not <laughs> they're not the best potions in the world. Might as well use them since you know, since we have the ring, we don't need to evoke it. Ah, centaur. Centaurs are a little annoying. Let's try and slow him down. There we go. That'll give him fewer chances to shoot us with arrows before we close with him. Yep, there we go. Oh, uh, skills. We currently have turned on long blades, which we have focused because we also have fighting and armor and evocations and invocations, all training. Uh, it's, it's a fairly thin spread, but... Fighting is just sort of a small incremental benefit that we don't mind gaining very slowly in strength. Invocations and evocations, conversely, have really great aptitude, so they only take a little bit of experience to advance in level. And armor, uh, I just want armor to be on, because I really like it as a defensive stat for a Deep Dwarf. At some point, I'll turn off some of these. Invocations obviously has kind of a hard cap. Uh, well, I, I I would have to check and see if Invocations also scales up the damage, but we, we want a bunch of it. We want our failure rate with Summon Greater Demon to be zero, basically. Antique Armor. Ooh, a Ruined Helmet. We can afford it. Let's check it out. Ah, Helmet of Sea Invisible. Well, the Sea Invisible part is not particularly useful since we already have this ring mail, but it is kind of nice because, uh, since we also have this ring of poison resistance, if we find some awesome armor that's way better than this, we can switch to that and still have access to both of these effects. And uh, the Helmet's a plus one, so it was basically worth the money anyway. So yes. We continue on. Undead convulses when we hit it with our Holy Wrath sword. Same thing with this imp. And that's just a, a nice benefit. I The last character I played that was particularly powerful was a demon spawn, and it was very frustrating in the, in the very late game not to have access to Holy Wrath. All right, onward. Oh my, that's quite a few orcs. Let's let's not fight all of them and an orc wizard. I would like to find a sword with better damage at some point. That would be nice. Machleb does appreciate blood sacrifice, but he's not particularly picky. He'll take any fresh corpse and you have a chance to get piety with it. As opposed to, like, Okawaru, who requires ever... He requires you to fight challenging foes, and so he really only grants piety for 
monsters with hit dice comparable to yours. Uh, necrophages are kind of scary because they can rot you, but it's not quite so bad for us since we are going to be using our wand of healing and potions of healing anyway to recover health. Okay, so I am going to switch back. This, I suppose, will be our jelly slaying sword since it's just going to get corroded away, and I don't want to have two weapons that are uh, reduced in effectiveness because of corrosion. Uh, I, I don't always agree with changes that the developers make, but one that I do think is quite nice is in 0 0.15, the next uh, patch, as it were, um, they are making corrosion I think more likely to happen, but they're also making it temporary, which is awesome. So that, you know, if you if you come across the slime pits, you don't have to wait until you have all artifact equipment or massively enchanted equipment to make use of it. Um, we found this book of control just now. We really don't care. We may memorize some spells at some point, but it won't be anytime soon, and it's we won't be memorizing anything beyond level 1 and maybe level 2 spells. Repel Missiles is probably as far as I will go with spellcasting. Because Repel Missiles is just so useful that I think it's worth the skill cost to train. Yeah, we're strong enough at this point that we can just kind of attack willy-nilly. Machleb heals us up, as you can see, quite efficiently. The things we do have to watch out for are, for example, this ogre, things that can do a large amount of damage in a single hit, as opposed to a number of weaker rapid hits. But, uh, ooh, crazy youth. Hmm. Let's try throwing some minor destruction at him. And well, it missed him, so it was not particularly useful. All right, well, let's slow him down. Ah, uh, it's out of charges. Okay, well, then let's hit him in the face. Interesting. He hit us with his quarterstaff of chaos and made us go berserk. I'm actually okay with that. <laughs> it makes it a little bit easier to take him down. We obviously don't want the quarterstaff of chaos. Ruined hammer, we don't care about. We're not going to be using maces and flails. This cloak, though. Cloak of darkness. Uh, what does this do? Makes us go invisible? Let's us evoke invisibility. That's kind of neat. Oh, and we have access to the Greater Servant of Machleb. Okay, cool. The the Greater Servant is... I mean, obviously we need a, a hefty amount of invocations to use it reliably. The, the Servants are a little bit risky because they can be hostile to you upon summoning, and you can never completely eliminate the chance of hostility for the Greater Servant. I think you can for the Lesser Servant, but uh, I think even with like 27 invocations, which you would not want to, uh, you would not want to, oh right, we don't heal naturally. Gah, every once in a while I will wait for a few hundred turns accidentally, like just there. But we're still at high enough hit points that we don't have to worry about being killed in one hit from a ranged enemy on level 7 of the dungeon. Oh, another ring of flight. How useless. We will gain piety with Machleb reliably enough that I don't feel bad about eating whenever I need to instead of sacrificing and waiting for a better chance. Let's try out this wand on him. Ooh, it's a wand of random effects. Well, that did a hefty amount of damage. Uh, let's see. A is what it is bound to. Okay. Yeah, I don't mind using minor destruction uh, poking us for a hit point a turn because, see, we regained three hit points there. So, uh, the, the fact that we don't heal naturally is not a, it's not a, a, an insurmountable burden. It's a little tricky to get used to, and if you don't find reasonably good equipment within the first few levels, it can be really rough. You have to burn a lot of your mana points to, uh, to make use of it. We're, uh, what we're going for with this particular character is a 
three rune run. Oh, it ate that. What was that? Oh, some kind of scroll. And the jelly ate it. I hate jelly so much. Although you can, uh, you can turn jellies to your will if you worship Jibia. The slime goddess. <laughs> Though, make sure if you want to do a Jivia run that you worship Jivia before you kill the royal jelly, the boss of the slime pits, because the royal jelly is Jivia's only sentient worshipper prior to you, and so if you kill it, <laughs> the god ceases to exist. Ow! Ow! This troll is hurting us a lot. Way, way more than I anticipated. Let's get a lesser servant and drink one of these potions of heal wounds. Get rid of the giant frog, that'll give us a couple extra hit points. Alright. Our orange demon poisoned the troll. This troll is just doing a lot more damage than I expected it to do uh, with each individual attack. Okay, good. Let's chop it up. Uh, we didn't get a troll hide. Troll hide armor is nice. Uh, actually, no, it's not. It's not for us. <laughs> we don't benefit from its regenerative effects. So, yeah. Let's recharge our wand of heal wounds here. Five charge is good. That was a nice recharge. Sometimes it will recharge it for two charges, and you just feel like you've <laughs> gotten chipped. It's anywhere between two and six, I want to say. I don't think I've ever seen more than six. Maybe seven once. Let's just let our demon take care of that. Yeah, uh, our goal with this character, I think I started to say before I got distracted, uh, is to be a just a heavy armor-wielding juggernaut. We're going to have a... a hopefully a gold dragon armor or a crystal plate armor and we're gonna be using a shield with a preferably a bastard sword also known as a hand and a half sword the the best of the one-handed weapons though an o demon blade would be fine as well the blessed version of a demon blade Those are both very high base damage swords. There's some of the. I, in fact, I think they are the swords have the highest one-handed base damage weapons in the game. It's very specific, but it's also kind of important. Okay, armor is at eight. Um, I think I think I'll keep training it. I really like armor on deep dwarfs because, for one, it increases the armor class bonus that you get from your, at least your body armor and maybe from all of your armor. But it also, um, heavier armors have a chance of causing you to miss in melee combat, and also miscast spells, of course. Uh, and increasing your armor skill decreases the chance of that happening. Uh, plate armor is a little bit tempting, but unless it's enchanted, it's only a boost of 3 base armor class, and the encumbrance rating of 18 is going to be a problem with armor skill of only 8. Right now, we have basically no penalty for our ringmail. Ringmail is, is actually a pretty good choice, this encumbrance rating of 7. That's a pretty good choice for anybody that wants to cast spells, but also have a little bit of beefiness. Uh, level 8 and 9 spells will be a little bit tricky with encumbrance rating 7, but not, not prohibitively so. The only people that really suffer from ringmail are the people who suffer from all armor, which are unarmed combat aficionados. Robes and animal skins are the way to go. Unless you don't mind having a, an unavoidable attack speed delay occasionally thrown in there at random where you can't predict it. If you haven't noticed, if, uh, if you haven't, or if you haven't watched any of my prior videos, I am a big fan of reliability, of predictability. 
the the fewer variables that are involved with the situation, the happier I generally am. Unless, of course, you know, the only outcome is my death. Blah. But it's it's why I uh, in the last with the last Deep Dwarf character we played, I was really hesitant to worship Trog and Makla because they are a little bit unreliable. I mean. To be fair, they are the god of berserkers and the god of destruction, respectively. So, respectively, uh, so I, I feel like unreliability is, or inconsistency is, is to be somewhat expected. Chain mail is between scale mail and plate mail. We still don't really want it. Our our ring mail is just really good. So, uh, for this point in the game, at least. So we're gonna keep using it. Defensive stats are just really, really good for Deep Dwarves. The, the, especially armor class, because the Deep Dwarves have a natural damage shaving that shaves off, I think it's like 1 to 10 damage, maybe? Something like that. Uh, I suppose I could look up exactly how much it shaves off since that's somewhat relevant. Um, deep Dwarf. Deep Dwarf. Damage shaving. Um, hmm. I don't see where... Oh, here we go. Yeah, so... Um, it increases per level and it goes from an average of 1.5 damage reduction at level 1 to an average of 3.5 at level 26. Uh, from 1 to 2 all the way up through 1 to 10. So it's um, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. And it's it's even better if you have already reduced the amount of damage that you've taken by uh, having a, a high armor class. Hmm. Yeah, I was about to say this wyvern might be problematic. Let's let's heal up, make sure he doesn't Oh, ouch. Let's get a servant oh, going on here. And heal ourselves again. We might really want more armor class than we have with this ring mail. We definitely will at some point. Okay. We definitely want a better weapon than what we have right now. This... Uh, Holy Wrath is a good brand, don't get me wrong. But it's not particularly useful early on, since the, the number of demons and undead that you encounter is much lower than the number of, you know, animals, critters. Oh. I want to try and make sure that we have uh, all of our staircases taken care of here. Oh man, I've missed a few. I must not have been paying attention, or I must have been in a hurry. Both of which are bad. I just haven't, uh, let's see. Okay, so we got all of these. And we got all of these. Another priest, eh? Let's blast him with minor destruction. Machleb is really nice uh, for melee characters that wouldn't otherwise have a ranged source of damage. Because the minor destruction doesn't cost you piety. It only costs you one hit point and some hunger. Which are, is, a, is an extremely low cost for a, an invocation cost well worth paying. Okay. Hound. Ah, longsword. Good. Nice to see that. Hopefully it's a decent one. Phantoms are... Uh, phantoms fall into the many weak hits category. Oh, we found a book of death at some point. Hmm. Don't think I'll do any necromancy. Highly doubt it. Okay, so we can get rid of this corroded longsword and 
it's probably better than this Falchion of Holy Wrath generally. It's a little less accurate, but its base damage is going to be higher. Uh, hmm. Let's try this Wand of Random Effects. You never know. Oh, it was blasted. Cool. And zap. Nice. Two-Headed Ogres are one of those high damage at low frequency monsters where it's gonna get past our damage shaving no matter what. Our armor class and damage shaving. Pretty much guaranteed. Even Ogres can. What was this down here? Just a quarter staff? Okay. This is a very odd level. Um, it's not f very often that you see these sort of pocketed levels in the main dungeon. They're very, very common in the Orcish Mines and the Slime Pits. Uh, oh, Nergal is really rough. Let's get an ally for her. The reason why I'm summoning lesser servants instead of greater servants... Oh, ouch. Hmm. We need to take this slowly. We have a lot of things hitting us at once. Okay, good. She died. Excellent. Alright. Nergal is tricky. She summons these spectral orcs, and then she hastes them, and uh, does mean things to you. She's, she's not a very pleasant character. Uh, let's drink this potion of heal wounds. As a deep dwarf, you should always drink your potions before recharging the wand, although you will need to recharge the wand a number of times. But uh, mana is not an issue for us. We're, like I said, not really going to be casting spells ever. And, well, if it were at maximum, our e evocations is pretty high, so it's going to be giving us a decent number of mana points, magic points. Uh, evocations, invocations, and spell casting all increase your mana. The highest skill, or the skill that gives you the most mana, is the one that is used. They don't stack. Uh, and invocations and evocations both give you, I think it's like two-thirds as much mana as spellcasting does. So they're not as efficient, but generally if you're putting a ton of levels into invocations or evocations, you're not a heavy spellcaster anyway, so you don't feel too bad. Okay, good. Uh, we're not drained anymore. Um, bum, 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 bum. We want to leave long blades on basically forever. Though at level 14, we're probably going to be good for most things. That's uh, 0.7 turns off of our minimum delay for our weapons, which is what we need for the longsword. Falchion is the same, though it does have a, a lower, a, a faster minimum delay. Okay, so here's what I meant by pocket level, or a pocketed level. We This level is split up into segments, as you can see. There's this segment over here that we have already seen, and presumably this is also going to be a single large segment. Oh, I suppose we can switch to the Holy Wrath when we are encountering undead. It's probably better. Yeah, see, we're at full health now. It's nice. Makaleb is, is good for Deep Dwarves. I recommend him. Battle Axe? Oh, Centaurs. Bach. Yeah, see, he's not doing enough damage to get past our shaving, plus our armor class. And once we add a shield, it'll be even better. I, I'm really kind of waiting on a buckler, since the shield will interfere significantly with our melee attacks until we get to 15 points in it, whereas a buckler, we only need to get to 5. Uh, one thing I could have, and perhaps should have done, on, done there, was put on the shield, walk towards him, and then take off the shield, but I think it takes a few turns... Oh wow, six turns. No, so I definitely should not have done that. <laughs> yeah, shields aren't easy to uh, to use sort of on and off like that. Okay, well, three pockets. Interesting. We'll have to find the other up staircase. A little hint, uh, in, the, in this version at least, I don't know about prior versions, on your mini-map the staircases are colored for you handily, so the up staircases are sort of a teal, light blue, and the down staircases are a, what is that, magenta or fuchsia or something? I don't know. Probably cyan and, my, cyan and magenta if we're going by 
printer toner. Not that there's any reason for that. I, I don't know if there's some, like, 8-bit schema that, that also would make it um, cyan and magenta. These wandering mushrooms can beat you up actually quite a bit. Wow, ow, apparently. And we are confused, so we're going to just try and kind of wander away. Ouch, ouch, ouch. So they don't actually move unless they're out of sight. Yeah, the reason why I did that is so that we're only fighting one at any given time. Man, this is... These guys are, uh... Jerks. They're big jerks. Let's grab these oranges and go over here and... I guess let's heal up. Since these guys are confusing us, it's... Maybe wise. We can also drink potions of curing, but I kind of like the idea of saving those. Um, let's kind of wait for a few turns here and hope that they... Yeah, there we go. It seems like fighting more than one of these guys at the same time is a bad idea. The nice thing is, we can just back away, wait for the confusion to go away. I, that's really what I should have been doing this whole time, is um, just taking one step away and waiting for it to go away, since they won't follow us. Ew, an Oclob. Hmm. I wonder, I hope this isn't the entrance to the lair. Gosh, I hope we don't have to get through an Oclob. What else is here? Hmm. Oh, it's a young Oclob plant. The acid it sprays is just as deadly, and I believe it spews it over the trees. So, yeah. This is awesome. What if we summon a lesser servant and tell it to attack the Oclob? Let's... yeah. We can't see that place. Okay, well... Eh. Oh dear, yeah. Let's let's just get out of here. I don't know, did it actually zap us? No. I don't know why we're injured, more injured. I think I missed something there. And if I'm more injured than I was before and I don't know why, chances are I should retreat. <laughs> That's just a reasonable rule of thumb. All right, yaks. Hmm. We can, we can fight us some yaks, especially if we kind of pull them back into this hallway. And we have that servant helping us out. Okay, so invocations and evocations are at seven and eight, respectively. Invocations, we still need a few levels. Evocations, we definitely need a few levels. I kind of want all of our evocables to be useful. Like, this evoke invisibility would be really useful in the layer. Getting that down to a, you know, 10% failure rate or so would be pretty neat. This is the first time that I found a source of invisibility early enough for it to be relevant. Towards the late game, invisibility stops being useful because everything can see invisible, and... The game knows that you've been trying to be clever this whole time, and it disapproves. Let these orcs come to us. Cool. Orcs are great for us. They're basically free hit points. Unless they have a priest with them, in which case... <laughs> it... hurts us mightily. Get this last pocket going. I probably should have healed up a little bit before climbing the stairs, but I'm I'm not really concerned about being one shot in the main dungeon. Two shot, maybe. One shot, no. Erica. Well, she's wielding a scimitar of flaming. I can't remember if scimitars are. Ow. Let's get ourselves an ally. And let's recharge our Wand of Heal Wounds. We should have done that before. Oh, only one charge. Gypped. Apparently you can only get one charge out of your ability. Hmm. Bolts of Poison. 
She seems pretty tough. Okay, well, that wasn't the worst. She did damage us quite a bit. So scimitars, are they long blades? Yeah. And it's increase in damage, and it has a brand, and it's enchanted. Peace. Now, we have this artifact halberd that we bought from a vendor for... It was an antique vendor for like 140 gold or something. It's fine, I guess. I'm hanging onto it in case of emergencies, but I don't anticipate using it at any point. Okay, let's heal us up a little bit. This poison, we can just wait it out. Uh, see, we didn't take any damage from that poison. It has to be a, a pretty heavy dose of poison before we suffer any ill effects. Our damage shaving takes care of it. Since poison deals damage like one at a time per stack. Hmm. It seems like there's something in here. Uh, does that seem reasonable to you? Seems reasonable to me. But I don't really have a source of flame. Maybe if we take a step back and wand of random effects. I, I don't really like wand of random effects anyway. They're really unreliable. Ah, cool. Good. Started a forest fire. With some lightning, I believe. <laughs> it's a fun effect. Don't walk into a forest fire. Especially next to the main tree. Until it's done burning. Okay, well, I guess there wasn't anything in there. Huh. Just a weird little patch of forest. Ooh, an artifact amulet. Oh, interesting. It has a uh, faith effect to it. It drains our intelligence, which puts it at five. That's, that's not great. Because later on, there are effects that can drain our intelligence for five or more. But for now, it, we don't really have to worry about that. Uh, we don't have... Oh, yeah, we do. Excellent. Let's see if there are any other properties. Nope, that's it. Well, okay, I guess we'll leave it on for now until we're sort of at max piety, and then we'll take it off, which will probably bring us back down to around the piety that we're at now. But the plus four dex is nice in the meantime. It does contribute to our, um, our damage, since we're a swords user. Oh, what's this staff? Summoning? Okay, sure. All right, onward. Uh, Amulets of Faith increase the piety gain from whatever increases piety with your particular god. It also um, increases the disfavor incurred if you screw up. So if you're a worshiper of the Shining One and you sneak attack a sentient being, if you behave dishonorably, you'll get, like, double penance. Or not not penance, but double piety loss. Okay, hill giants are really tough, so we definitely want... Oh, dear. A hostile demon. Great. Just what we needed. This is why Machleb can be a real pain. The reason why I really wanted an ally is because hill giants can just smash through our defenses. Okay. And and th that that's like the thing about hostile demon summonings. The reason why I just hate them so much and the reason why it, it made me even hesitant to even worship Machleb in the first place is because when you summon them it's it's really easy to not notice that they're hostile. The little heart in the upper right-hand corner tells you, but you're generally not counting on it being hostile because it isn't 99% of the time once you have sort of maxed out invocations. Or if it's not 99%, then, you know, a hefty amount of the time. We'll just let this guy sort of take the brunt of our killer bee damage here. Killer bees I'm not really worried about. We have resist poison, they don't tend to do a lot of damage in any given hit, and their poison is 
Yeah, we have resist poison and damage shaving. Like, we're, n we're not worried of killer bees. Still don't want to be surrounded by them, of course, but... Okay, so it looks like this is just a little... Let's see if we can get close here if our passive magic mapping kicks in. No? Shucks. It looks like this is just a little food stash guarded by these Oclobs. If we... I don't know. If we ever figure out a way to deal with them, we might venture in there. I, I just... I don't think it's worth it prior to that. Okay, so next level will be the entrance to the lair, since we have not found it so far, and it cannot be lower than level 11. Let's pull this guy back upstairs and bash him. This is a, a an ugly thing. They, uh, you can tell what brand they are by their color. Like, white is resistant to cold. They change periodically based on various effects. Their corpses are always mutagenic, and they used to always be bad mutations for ugly thing corpses. Yikes, a lot of stuff showed up. Well, oh, ow, ow. Jeez, these guys are uh these guys are really hurting. A ton. Oh, and I haven't identified scrolls yet either. Okay, well at least we can Ow So painful. Just really not fun at all here. Um there we go. Man, we are we are taking a lot more damage than I thought we would be at this point in the game. I think I think we need better armor. Like heftier armor. And also other slots. We don't have gloves or boots yet. Maybe I need to be wearing the shield. I think that that might be a good idea. Let's turn off some of this business. How are our invocations? Greater servant is at 14%, but we don't really want to use that for a while. We're not even going to need that for a while. So let's turn that off. And I guess we can turn off evocations for a while. Let's, yeah, let's just do this. Because I'm really sick of taking all this damage. And, you know, we're kind of burning through our reserves of mana here. I say burning through while we still have 16 left, but I mean, if every single fight we have to expend one, we're not going to last very long. It's going to be really nice to get to the lair, where things are more predictable. The reason why I'm sticking with this staircase is because I already kind of know what's down there, and figure I can just pull it up without too much of a problem. Ba -ba -ba. Shadows are annoying if you don't have a source of sea invisible, but we do. Okay, so one thing I'm going to do that I had neglected to do previously is identify our scrolls and potions. Uh, unfortunately, it's... Oh, Potions of Poison. Good. Well, the one that shattered was not important to us then. What's this? Berserk Rage. Okay, that's not really a big deal either. Scroll of Fog. Scroll of Enchant Armor. Uh, Might as well enchant this Helmet of Sea Invisible. It's likely that we will uh, be using this for quite some time. And... Uh, Having an extra point of armor class is nice. We obviously we, we cannot enchant our artifact. Artifacts are immune to, or are unaffected by anything that would alter it. Though they can be sacrificed to some gods. Okay, so the there's our teleportation. Yeah. Okay. There's blinking. Noise. Recharging. That's nice. Random uselessness. Hooray. Immolation, magic mapping. Ah, I suppose we can see if there's anything behind those Oclob plants. Nope. Okay. And enchant weapon three. Okay. Well, this scimitar is doing fine for us. Plus four, plus four. That's that's nice. I'm pretty okay with a plus four, plus four scimitar of flaming. That's sixteen damage plus the flaming brand which does uh, up to double damage to vulnerable creatures, and I think up to 50% additional damage to non-vulnerable creatures. Um, yeah. 
So the yeah the the highest damage single-handed weapon is the blessed bastard sword, which is sixteen base damage. Uh, yeah, yeah, in the entire game, I think. And it's a uh, oh interesting. It's dexterity weighted rather than strength weighted. Only 30% of its damage comes from strength, so really we should be putting more points into dexterity. But I'm okay with having a very high strength, uh, primarily because it will make armor much easier for us to wear. I, I'm willing to sacrifice some damage in exchange for damage reduction on a deep dwarf. Maybe that's wrong, but I don't know. It's how we're going to play it for here. I, but from now on, we'll certainly put all of our points into dexterity. That seems seems like a good compromise. I, I had thought that most long blades were a little more heavily weighted towards strength. I thought that they were around 40 or 50 percent instead of 30, but the, the two hand... Yikes! That's a lot of centaurs. Jeez. Well, they all get another shot at me, but uh, fortunately they didn't do any damage. Yeah, I'm feeling good about this shield. I think I think this is the correct decision. I think we're we're doing enough damage now. Gosh, this is just a really rough looking dungeon level eleven. This is why I really hate late layers, because you like the the. The first three levels of the layer are going to be easier than this next level of the dungeon. Almost certainly. I mean, there, there's a chance that they'll be harder, but I I can't imagine that being the case. Flail, centaur, sure. I'm going to get kind of here so that once you get in melee range of centaurs, they're really not scary unless they happen to have picked up a powerful weapon at some point. Which is not super common. Oh dear, that's a model dragon, isn't it? Ugh, model dragons are gross. Let's drop some of our scrolls while it approaches. Uh... Because it covers you in liquid flames, which very rapidly chews through your scrolls. If you do not have some form of conservation. Just because it, it burns you every turn, and, and I think it's... It's not outside the realm of possibility that Sticky Flame has a higher chance of setting your things on fire, your scrolls on fire, than regular flame. I mean, that that just flavor-wise makes sense to me, so I, I wouldn't be surprised. However, it is one of those effects that we're not as concerned about as a Deep Dwarf. Again, lower damage incremental, lo lower damage per tick, like damage over time effects are not as scary for us as for many other characters. This Cobalt Demonologist is a little annoying. This Ice Demon is pretty strong. Wow, really strong. Ow! Incredibly strong. Let's get out of here. Let's heal ourselves. And... Ah, uh, we can use Teleport, sure. Oh, good. The ice demon moved away for some reason. Ah, now I wish I hadn't used teleport. Well, not much we could do about it there. This is just a really tough level. I may retreat into the lair down here. We saw it through our, our passive magic mapping here. Let's get ourselves an ally. Okay, good. It is an ally. Just wanted to make sure. Vampire mosquitoes are annoying. They can cause sickness and rot. Okay, um, why don't you guys deal with the hill giant for now? At least B 
beat him up a little bit while I take care of this other guy. Okay, all right. Meh. This is a very rough level. I mean, it is level 11 of the dungeon, so, you know, we're, we're pretty deep in. There are only 15 regular levels before you hit the depths and hit a major spike in the power of enemies. Okay. Let's, let's fight this a little better than just rushing in. The reason why I did last time was because I really wanted to get to the... Oh, geez, there's more than one demonologist. That's why. Okay. Blat. I wanted to get to the demonologist before they summoned too many demons. However, that did not occur. The demonologist summoned several demons. Okay. All right. This is just a really rough level. All around. Fortunately, we are getting some hit points back from Machleb. There's a ring there. Yeah, when, when our flaming brand procs, proc is a shorthand for triggering or ha taking effect. Gadget shop, ooh. Hmm. Anything in here that we would like to purchase? Maybe a wand of cold? Huh. I think I'll hang on to my money for now. It's good to know that it's there. Since we're, you know, wanting to train our evocations for a reasonable amount of time. Okay, I am going to go ahead and pop into the lair here. I just, I think it's way safer than the things we've been experiencing. All right, what is this? A plus five ring of dexterity? Holy moly. That's great. We'll definitely use that instead of a ring of sustenance. I'm not too worried about food. The lair being, you know, a little bit risky. We'll go ahead and pop a charge. I mean, if the first thing we encounter is a spiny frog, I don't want to be caught unawares. Poison resistance is nice in the layer proper, but not necessary. Uh, we are going to have a little bit of trouble with... Um, with... Hydras. I guess Machleb can come to our aid, and we can always throw on this staff and try and, I don't know, beat it in the face. That doesn't seem like a great solution. We'll probably use Machleb invocations, greater destruction, most likely. Because that's at 4% failure, yeah, that seems reasonable. Uh, that faint crackling of a melting archway is a cave of frost. I'm not particularly concerned about trying to find it and enter it because we don't have any form of cold resistance and it's kind of suicide to just take a little jaunt into a frost cave without any cold resistance. So I think we'll leave it be. I I always hate abandoning a, a temp branch, but sometimes you have to. I mean, discretion is definitely the better part of Valor in this game. And I have been playing fast and loose lately. Ooh, Joseph. Ouch. He hurts a lot. Fortunately, we can break line of sight. He'll probably show up here. Um, he can actually do a ton of damage with a single hit, so we're going to back up. We're going to summon ourselves a friend. And, yeah. Oh, good! He showed up right next to us. That's pleasant. I, I feel like he does less damage with his quarterstaff than he does with his sling. It's interesting to note that monsters, given the chance, will always switch to a melee weapon when you're in melee range, even though, as a player, you are not penalized for 
using ranged weapons in melee range. Bolt of Lightning, let's recharge our wand again here. And... Yeah. Gosh, I just feel like we're taking a ton of damage, but... Maybe, maybe this is the amount of damage that we're supposed to be taking, and I, I am just hypersensitive to it because of our dwarfishness. See if his sling is any good. Meh. Not good enough to haul around with us. We're not really going to use it. Guanas, no problem. See, I was hoping that we'd come into the lair and just have a nice easy time and... Ah, Hydras. Alright, what's our major destruction? C? Okay, it has to come a step closer. Uh, you, go attack that. <laughs> we'll see if they can't take it down for us. Ah, yeah, okay. Probably just minor destruction is appropriate. There we go. All right, that that wasn't bad. Of course, it was only a four-headed hydra, so it was quite small. I think that's the smallest kind of hydra you can get, short of... Oh, we actually are fine against hydras. Our scimitar is a scimitar of flaming. Ha! How unintentionally clever of us. Darg! Yikes, a powerful model draconian wizard. Fireball, Static Discharge, Blink, and Mephitic Cloud. Ugh, and he's very resistant to fire. This guy looks really tough. Man, this has just been a tough few levels of the dungeon. I'm sorry to complain, but I, I just think it's been really difficult for us. More difficult than usual. Alright, what are we going to do here? Dare we risk summoning a Greater Servant? No, because if we do and it's hostile, we just die. No take backsies. Hmm. We are limited with our wands currently, unless we wanted to spend a mana point recharging this wand of slowing, which I don't feel like it is worth it. I think summoning a servant, a lesser servant, is a good idea. But let's consider all our options here. It, uh, yeah, I think it wouldn't be a bad idea to spend our first turn summoning a lesser servant. Our second turn drinking this potion of haste. And then seeing where we're at. We may have to make the subsequent, you know, Summon Servant, drink Potion of Heal Wounds, then drink Potion of Haste, but... Alright. Okay, good. Good. He, he It took him a second to notice us. The reason why I didn't back up and hope that he wouldn't notice us is because we're... N unstealthy. Like, we, we make a, a reasonable amount of noise, and I don't think that that even breaks line of sight. Maybe it does. I don't know. I, I'm not willing to risk it. So he could have, you know, just noticed us anyway, and we would have lost a turn. What did we took, do that took zero turns? Was summoning a demon a zero turn action? That seems strong. Huh. Let's drink a potion of haste, for sure. And... Switch over to our Falchion of Holy Wrath. Ah, okay. Ah, oh, we lost our scroll of blinking. Very unfortunate. No, I bet our... Ah, no, he's very resistant to fire. Our Scimitar of Flaming is not going to do more damage than this, probably. Okay, Lightning... I'm trying to keep a close eye on how much damage each of these things is doing to us. Ah, drained. No bueno. Heavily damaged. Okay. So far, it doesn't seem like he's been able to deal too much damage to us in any one spell. Sod is a myth. The orb is a fable. You'll soon be a tale. 
Well, buddy, I have seen the orb with my own eyes. So, I mean, not with Grumbletooth's eyes, certainly, but... Ah, uh, he blinked, huh? Well, let's summon another servant, then. And tell him to attack that. It does take time, by the way, to tell your summoned creatures to do things. Takes a full turn if you're not hasted. Let's use this... Is he resistant to electricity? No, he is not. Okay. I don't remember what killed Darg. I think I think Darg was one of those characters that was that had some really good spells but almost no equipment and just ran into a few things that were too strong for him. Let's heal ourselves. There's no good reason not to. We're going to want to after this fight anyway. Ha! Boom! Got him! Alright. I think that was a good fight. That feels like a good fight. One that we planned out well. I guess the only thing I didn't plan properly was dropping that scroll of blinking, but it's conceivable that we would have wanted it to get away anyway. So the fact that it burned while well, tragic is acceptable. I would love to find some dragon armor of some sort. Oh, here's that frost cave. Oh, let's re-equip our scimitar of flaming if we're fighting these frost things. That seems like a very good idea. Um... <clears throat> oh, that's not a choke point like I thought. This one kind of is, until things walk past us, and that means they take up a turn. Well, that was really easy. I suppose it couldn't hurt to poke our heads in. There's pretty much always a an escape right away. Let's let's poke our heads in. I'm so greedy. That was really greedy. But, you know... No pain, no gain. Also, it seemed like... Frost caves are really good about... Ice caves are really good about giving you um, sources of cold resistance. Which, oh, jeez. We made a big blunder here. <laughs> we brought a potion of cure mutation into a frost cave without any form of conservation. So we're going to drop that there. These other potions, meh, I don't care so much about. They can shatter, and I won't be heartbroken. Though it would be just prudent to drop these potions of curing and magic, and probably agility and restore abilities. Yeah. Porridge. Two of these potions of might. And we have a one of heal wounds. So yeah, let's just drop all our potions. <laughs> Except for that one potion of might. We'll keep that as a contingency. Watch it shatter on our first encounter with something. I'm a little nervous because we don't... I mean, we don't have any cold resistance. I'm, I'm basically relying on damage shaving to do good for us. Ooh. We may just grab this gold and go. <laughs> oh, I'm so greedy. I should leave. I should leave now. But there's more gold right there. Ah. Oh. Eh. Okay. Let's, let's back up. Let's... Let's head back to over here. Check out this branch a little bit. Okay, just ice beasts. Ice beasts are fine. I ain't afraid of no ice beasts. Yeah, these really aren't dangerous to us, are they? Unless we take forever to kill them. Ice dragons, that would be a problem. That would be something to run away from, for sure. As long as we keep our distance, though, we should be able to. Their breath... I mean, it seems like there are enough sort of line of sight... Oh, dear. Uh, yeah, we're not going there. Nope. Not going there at all. Let's 
we can try back up here. I should just leave. Greed. Greed is the downfall of many a character. Ah, well this just leads back into that room that, yeah, we're not going to bother with that. We're not going to try and fight those things. Not worth it. The chance that we die is just too great. We got some gold and some experience. We'll be happy with that. Yeah, I, that was that was the right decision. I should have left earlier. <laughs> if I if I were smart, I would have left earlier. But our gamble paid off. Sometimes you do have to gamble, and our lack of heavy armor at this point is telling. We're not worshipping Okawaru, so we don't get to trust the inevitability of a god gift. Okay, we will be making our little stash on this level of the lair. And Machleb is healing us up now that we're fighting things that aren't going to two-shot us, like some of our recent enemies. We might even be able to replenish our resources instead of having to expend them constantly. What are we training? Still long blades and shields? Yeah, that's fine. I, I really do plan on using shields for the rest of the game if I can wrangle it. And even if I end up finding, you know, some crazy two-handed sword that's just nutter butters like a claymore or something, um... I'll consider switching and, and not using the shield, but I mean, we can cross that bridge when we come to it. There's an altar of Zin. That's kind of nice. Um, one option for us, if we decide to go ahead, if we just find a slew of powerful artifacts. Oh my, this video has gone on for some time. I will end, end the video certainly after after I finish exploring this level very shortly. Uh, we're going to grab these javelins. Javelins are good to have on hand if you're strong enough to handle the uh, the load. They weigh like 16 alms apiece. Alm is the arbitrary unit of mass. <laughs> As opposed to an ought, which is, or not opposed, but uh, compared to an ought, which is an arbitrary unit of time. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. I'll probably establish a stash off video. But uh, I, I like this character. Grumbletooth is is doing all right. We've 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 had to expend a few more consumable resources than I would generally like to by this point in the game. But we've had some tough levels, so I feel like it's been fine. Um, we haven't expended them unnecessarily for the most part. So thanks for watching, and we'll return to Grumbletooth soon.